morning YouTube it's been a while since we've done a video on the 50 by 100 garage uh, I haven't really been doing much I've been down with a back injury so nothing's really been happening since we poured the walls uh, the only thing we've got done we've got the electric and plumbing the underground electric and underground plumbing in and today we're going to get those trenches backfilled and hopefully cover the entire floor area with the sub base rock so about 6 30 in the morning i got the dump truck warming up and building up air pressure so i'm going to be hauling some rock in from the quarry and we'll get everything backfilled and then we'll start putting rock down so here's what we got our underground plumbing we got a floor drain this is for the bathroom the toilet there sink the vent and then we got this is a little office area i'm gonna have a kitchen cabinet and a sink so that's the drain for the sink and then this here was the main sewer going out we got to clean out outside the building and then that'll go to wherever our septic tank goes once the house and everything's built uh, the main water line that trench is backfilled already but main water line comes into the building here I put a spare line in going just outside of the building and then I marked I put a groove on the concrete wall outside just in case something would ever happen I've already got another water line in here this PEX is pretty strong I don't ever anticipate problems but I had a piece of a pipe here so rather than throwing it away I just ran it in here and we got another PEX going out we got a uh, little yard hydrant over there by the garage door so that pipe goes goes in this trench here and it goes over and then you can see the electric um, we've got electric on each wall to get our our main runs back to the panel and then we got four going out here one's electric and then i got three extras uh, two for the different welders i have and one's for a plasma cutter that i have and then this two inch is the main line coming in it goes outside to the wall where the electric meter will be and then that comes all the way in here this will be a little uh, storage clot area it's like 10 by 15 i think that's where the electric panel will be so all the conduits are coming up to go on the bottom of the electric panel i got this pipe here goes out that's the feed from the outdoor wood boiler that is like a four inch it's completely filled full of like spray foam and it's got two 32 millimeter pex lines centered up in it for the feed and return to the boiler i can see way out there is uh where that goes kind of guessed on it but that's where the pipe ended up so i guess that's where the boiler's going and then i've also got a conduit running along with that for the electric that has to go into the boiler for the uh, fans and whatnot so that's where we're at now uh, I see the walls nothing really much changed out here I did get the foam on the walls I didn't shoot a video I didn't think anyone's gonna watch that but uh, there is foam going all the way down to the footing on both sides and then that's two inch foam in here you see we beveled the top and then left it down so when we pour our concrete floor it goes tight and you don't see this foam uh, most of this area is just going to get four inches of concrete because it's this is all storage and just kind of workshop area the area where i'm going to have traffic going in and out we're going to go a thicker floor but we're going to put four inches of rock down in all this yet and then it gets two inches of foam on top and then we start with the heating tubes so there's our pile of rock hopefully we should have enough that's all ca6 rock which has to be compacted for these trenches i'm getting clean rock uh, you don't have to compact it as hard so i'm a little short on that today so i'm gonna go pick up a few loads to quarry this morning so I'm going to go ahead and do that, and we'll bring you back once we start actually doing something here. Alright, we're back out here. 
tell it's a nice sunny hot day. We got all the rock in, all the pipes, all the underground piping is backfilled. And we're ready to start putting rock on top here for the base for the concrete. We got uh, some storms moving in here. In about three hours, it's supposed to start storming. I don't think we're going to get it all down. I'm going to try to at least get this section here down and covered. Hopefully, as dry as the dirt is, it doesn't rain much. And uh, the, it'll just soak up what we got. We've had some bad luck with storms here recently. That's another, well, besides. My back hurt and I couldn't work. Uh, we had some pretty bad storms come through. They had a, a chance of rain and one night we had over 10 inches of rain dumped on us. This whole entire thing was completely flooded. I actually had my plumbing in at the time and there was so much rain it actually floated all that PVC up out of the trench. So I ended up redoing it all. That was the second time I put it in. Um, I didn't have the pipes full of water and I couldn't backfill it because it didn't have the plumbing inspection from the county. And uh, they said, oh, there was just a chance of rain. We weren't even, so, you know, there wasn't a definite thing. There was like a 50% chance of rain. And that night we got over 10 inches, which they said that's about a quarter of the year's worth for us all in one night. And it was in a period of about three to four hours. So it floated all that plumbing up out of the trench. Uh, I had it all bedded in sand. It washed most of that sand away. So we ended up having to redig it out. It was full of mud and silt. I had to dig it all back out and put all the plumbing back in so it had the correct slope. So, and then probably, yeah, the week after that, we had about six inches of rain in one afternoon. So we had about 16 inches of rain in a period of just a hair over a week. So it was a mess out here for the last month and a half. It took a long time for it to dry out. So we're finally moving forward. Uh, we'll get some rock on this and, and get going.
guys we're back it's actually the following saturday from where we left off uh, we were spreading that rock here for the base and i was saying we were kind of waiting on rain well we had a few drops and then all of a sudden we had a heck of a downpour and uh we had to shut down for the day and i come back that was sat last saturday i come back sunday and i forgot my camera so i finished spreading what we had you didn't miss much it's kind of the same as what, what you just saw but we did run a hair short on rock you see then uh need something to do so i dug the pads for the lift so i've got those two i don't know if you want to call them footings or whatever for the the two post lift going in so we got those in rock base and since I've got rock coming up, that's the reason for the styrofoam here. Is just to hold my rock back so I've got a nice edge. Because when I put the styrofoam on top for the heated floor, with this hole here, the rock would be at an angle. You can't have it at a perfect 90. So that styrofoam will kind of be undermined, basically, and have no support underneath it. And then when you start pouring concrete on it, It'll either break the foam or the concrete will get under the foam and the foam will start to float in the concrete and then you'll be fighting it. So that's why we just took some scrap pieces of foam and built those little forms to hold the rock back. So I got the dump truck warming up. I got to go get hopefully two more loads will get us taken care of here. Uh, this is all graded out. It's about three quarters to one inch low across the whole thing I got the clean rock I'm sprinkling on top just to get it up to grade it's a little easier to rake the clean rock than this once this grade eight's packed in it's harder than heck so you really can't just rake it around uh, we do have plans uh, I back dragged this just to smooth it out once this rock is all in I'm gonna go rent a smooth drum roller and vibrate it and roll it with a steel drum roller just to be sure i don't think i think with the skid steer bouncing on it it's pretty good and then that rain we had after that it was really really hard and i had to break it up with the skid steer again i did run this section here we actually started on the foam i used the dump truck i had a full load of rock on it so the truck was a little over thirty-four thousand, and i just wheel rolled it with the tires i just back forward backwards over the whole thing and rock barely went down but just checking for soft spots and made sure it was good but with all the obstructions out here it's kind of hard to do that with the truck and get everything so that's why I'm going to rent the roller uh, just to make sure everything's compacted properly before we start putting foam down you can kind of see we're just trying it out I needed something to do during the week and since this was all packed in uh, I had to hold all the foam out here. I got some more staged. I got a little bit more at home yet too. But we're gonna start laying that down. I've got two different types of foam. I think I mentioned that earlier. Uh, this stuff over here is a little cheaper. This side, it's gonna be heated. There's gonna be a wall right here with these pipes. This side's gonna be heated, but it's pretty much just keep it above freezing. And then over here is where I'll actually be working and I want it comfortable. Um, this foam is rated for under slab it's it's got an r8 rating where i'm using the pink owens corning foam over here which has got an r10 the price difference is mainly why i did it it would have been probably an extra four to five thousand dollars to foam this over here if anyone's checked foam prices recently well like everything else it is outrageous luckily i bought all this pretty early i saw prices going up on some material so it was expensive at the time when I bought it. I thought it was. But now I've recently checked prices of foam and it's doubled since I bought it. Uh, the Owens Corning Pink, I had a quantity break since the amount I bought. And I think I was paying like $35 a sheet for it. And then this white foam was about 20, I think 23 or $24 a sheet. Uh, I just looked the other night because in case I run low the Owens Corning is $65 a sheet now and that white foams pushing 35 
36 I don't remember the exact number but it was up in the mid 30s so it's it's went up quite a bit so I'm glad I bought it when I did I've just been storing it at my house um, probably since like March I think March or April but I'm glad I did that because I saved a lot of money by doing that so all right as you can see behind me we got that rock down and we got the roller here my dad's going ahead and uh, rolling all that rock in I think it's one we could rent locally but it'll work for us we'll probably, like, we'll probably hit it a couple times it's pretty tight and, uh, solid so I don't think we're gonna have any issues so I'll let you go ahead and watch that It packs in really hard when you hit it with a vibrator. I was hoping we'd get a little moisture. Do it last week when the, the rock comes with moisture in it. it. It pounds in really hard when it gets a little damp. The stuff we dumped this morning, it's rolling in really nice. You can see we got all the rock in it's rolled nice and firm compacted well 
most of it is pretty much right on grade that we need it on. I got a few places where it went down, be it about a half inch. Um, every, anything more than that I put a little in. So I got a pile of clean rock I'm going to sprinkle on top just so it's got a nice even base. This grade 8 is nice and hard, but when you roll it in, it's not perfectly flat. It's got a couple little waves to it so that clean rock will kind of take that out and give that foam something nice to sit on so as you can see we got more bundles of foam just carried in uh, we're going to go ahead and get started on that that's going to be a separate video i got uh i was going to do it all in one but i'm going to show putting the foam down and then we're going to start putting the radiant floor heating tubing down so i'm going to put all that in one video so this one's just going to be a putting the base down um might have been kind of boring i know some people i know it's kind of boring for me since i do it every day so some people might find it interesting so we were doing it anyway we may have may as well have filmed it so i appreciate you watching uh check out the next video coming out it's going to be putting all this foam down and then we've got whew, thousands of feet of radiant floor uh tubing to put down this uh, 5,000 square feet is what we've got in here and I've got a, a tube at every foot, so it's going to be probably about 5,000 foot of tubing going down. It's all going to terminate up in here, so be sure to watch that video. I don't know when it's going to be. I'm trying to get them out as soon as possible, so I appreciate you watching. As I said, be sure to check out the upcoming videos. We'll catch you next time.